my husband Bob is a volunteer firefighter, has been for 29 years now. And when we lived in Hillier, there was a fire that happened with the family. And we started taking care of some of the needs for that family. And it just grew from there. Um, I was on the Hillier Rec for a number of years and saw a lot of seniors and a lot of families doing without. And Bob and I just started feeding families from our own home. At one point, we were feeding 65 people from our own income. So when we moved to Wellington, we thought we gotta we gotta do something. We got it started to expand more. Um, the word spread. So that's when I decided to become a um, get registered and become a charity. And spoke to Klein at Pearson's and said, you know how how do you find the the community for seniors for food? And he was having people charge groceries that were having difficulty paying them at the Foodland store. So he kind of guided me and showed me a couple things that I could do, and that's how it all started. More people are coming, uh, more families um, this year, especially. Uh, we didn't see the numbers during COVID, and I think that had something to do with the income, extra income that people were receiving from the government. Um, we saw the, the the senior meals pick up because that's one thing that we saw that with the shut-ins, a lot of people were afraid to leave, so we picked up on the senior meals and did a lot more of those. Um, but the numbers are now increasing now, and I think it's because of the cost of living. And talking to different food banks, seniors have doubled going to food banks over the last couple of years. And, and the hardest part with running any food bank is you see seniors doing without, but seniors were always raised that families come first. And to get a senior to come to a food bank is almost impossible. Uh, that's a, that is one of the reasons why we started the meals through, during COVID, because we knew that there was a lot of seniors that were going to not go out. And not only because they were terrified of COVID, but that they wouldn't be eating properly um, and they wouldn't come to a food bank. But for some thankful reason, they will take meals. it's hard to, to come to a food bank there's always been a stigma since I can remember we're trying to remove that stigma uh, mm -hmm. but now this year we're having people come to us that said you know I'm crying saying never thought I would have to use a food bank and we try to meet them um, you know when it's confidential you know some people just don't want to get in the lineup because you know being in a rural area people talk and it's it's very difficult and you know and you know not everybody knows somebody else's situation they don't know what's behind the scenes but you know, that's the hard part is try to get people to understand that you could be in that position. And now I think people are finding out with the cost of living, especially groceries and gas and daycare and everything else, that you know what, I'm like one second from using a food bank. It's just, it's very difficult out there right now. Uh, we're networking with a lot of, uh, of the different uh, food insecurity groups in the county. So we would call them and say, listen, we have two extra bushels of uh, potatoes or apples or who can use what, and we would just distribute it. We purchased everything from local farmers or we had farmers donate a lot of food. We use what we can every week and uh, what we didn't use, we put in meals. Um, you know, and part of being quite part of the Quinney Regional Food Share, we were able to go to the warehouse once a month and draw from there. Each month it's different. I mean, we get cases of canned tomatoes, we get cases of spaghetti sauce, we get peanut butter, we get a lot of the staples. Um, not that it always does us the month, it may do us one or two weeks, but it's still there for us to draw from. Um, social media works for us, it may not for other people, but I think constantly being out there in the public, showing people where their funds are going, and showing them that we, you know, I constantly post the meals, constantly post the Christmas hampers. I, I constantly post people so people see that this, their funds are actually helping people in their community. And I think that helps us to be able to get funds when we need it. We do a lot of fundraising, a lot of food drives. Um, but honestly, our community has kept us afloat. Another big problem that food banks are having, and this has happened in the last, well, probably three years of, since COVID, is we can't find the quantities of stuff that we need. So I can make, an, like, I'll give you an example. In October, I ordered a hundred of different items, you know, the staples, and I was lucky to get 20 of them. So when we get our order that's supposed to come in and they say, I'm so sorry, but we only got 20 of the items because of shipment issues or because they, they didn't get their stock. So we're now as volunteers having to go to, instead of going to one store to get the supplies, we're having to drive all over. Uh, I have new uh, two uh, women that just joined me to, as my shoppers and they've even had to go to Oshawa, to Bancroft, to Kingston, 
just to get the quantity that that we need. Foodland has the bags that they sell for us. Um, there's their five dollar bags and ten dollar bags, and I have told Foodland what we want in the bag, so people know what's in those bags exactly what we need that month. We've now started um, reaching out to the churches. Each church will collect one item a month. So, like United Church in picked in Wellington is going to be collecting uh, granola bars and juice boxes, and then St Andrews will be doing something else. And we're trying to network out that way now, so we can get the, the quantities that we need. A back to school fundraiser with Cram the Cruiser with the OPP, and that collects all our, our lunch stuff to get started for back to school. We do a back, backpack program when uh, Women's Golf Club started the backpack program, and, and we get calls from the school sometimes if you get a used backpack, could you please give it to us? But we end up um, thought, you know what, we need to start a backpack program and get new backpacks and school supplies in and lunch pails. And so we fill up the whole backpack with everything a child will need. And we do that, and then we do the snowsuit program where each child gets a snowsuit, hat, mitts, uh, scarf, boots. And then we also do the Christmas program where each child will receive Christmas gifts. And uh, Chris, of course, with the Christmas hampers. And at Easter time, we have, uh, the community has reached out to me a couple of times, so what can we do for Easter besides food? We want to do something for kids. So at Easter time, we do chocolate bunnies and coloring book and crayons. And we're partnered with County Kid Reads, so we give out uh, books. Um, uh, that's one program I, I constantly um, want to promote because County Kid Reads has been part of our program for a long time. And um, we found that a lot of the families have are, you know, asked for the books. Um, some families couldn't read and actually their children were reading them and the picture books go really good because parents can see what's happening and, and have a lot of them have learned to read. And we've watched over the years how some that started with a picture book and talking adults have now gone into novels. And I think that is part of County Kid Reads and being part of networking with them and with yeah. the, you know, with that happening. The things that cost a lot when you're doing groceries are laundry soap, dish soap, deodorant, um, personal hygiene products, and um, started promoting that we would like that stuff. And people thought, I never even thought about that with a food bank. I always thought of peanut butter, the staples, you know. I mean, they can afford a box of craft dinner, but to go and buy deodorant that may be five, six, sometimes eight dollars, it's kind of difficult. You know, and lunch bags. People don't think about lunch bags. They don't think about saran wrap. You know, they think, well, they, they need the food. Um, you know, and toiletries. Toiletries is a constant thing. Diapers is a constant thing. Um, that's another thing that people don't think about with food banks is diapers and baby wipes. I mean, that's something that we're always looking for. So keep an eye on, on uh, you know, sales. If you see something on sale, buy a couple extra and then drop them off at the food bank. We'd really appreciate it. 25 volunteers on a regular basis and probably a list of probably 30 to 40 more that we could call at any time. And honestly, I get calls constantly saying, how can we help? Now, I, I do tell them that, you know, we're not the only food insecurity group in the county, but, you know, you maybe reach out to Food to Share, reach out to the Picton Food Bank, you know, reach out to the hub, see who else needs help. Honestly, my volunteers are fantastic. This this food bank would not run without them. And I, and I want to encourage that. I, I, I don't, we... For people to understand that the reason we do this is not we don't get paid we volunteer we want to be part of a community we want to build up our community it's all about helping your neighbor i think if you want to build your community up it doesn't just you know start with meetings and everything else it starts with your heart and it starts about reaching out looking around you whether it's shoveling a neighbor's driveway whether it's by picking up somebody's groceries the community only gets built and only feels like a community when everybody gets involved and helps If there's people out there that need a food bank, please come. We've all been there. We've all struggled. I don't know anybody that hasn't struggled. I mean, one of the reasons I started this food bank is I was a single mom for years, um, for eight years. And I was, I had that pride. I was not going to a food bank. I mean, I was working three jobs and going back to school and trying to take care of two little girls. And, uh, I refused to go and Christmas one year, I remember I had nothing for my girls and I didn't know what I was going to do. And, uh, I got a knock on the door. One of my neighbors put my name in at uh, Seventh Day Adventist Church in Belleville, and I received a Christmas hamper and all these gifts. Well, I cried and cried, and I kept saying, "No, no, there's more people out there that could use it." But I honestly, had nothing under the Christmas tree, and it—I it, don't want to say it was pride. Or, I guess that some of it's pride, but some of it's—I know there's people out there that's worse off than me, and I want them to have it. 
and uh, and I've always been a giver, so it was hard for me to take because I always gave. And I remember calling Seventh Day Adventists and saying, "Thank you so much for what you've done. Someday I will pay this forward." So this is kind of like my someday paying it forward. And I'll, I just want to end this with a cute little story about, I guess, last Christmas, I wrote Seventh-day Adventists a letter and said, you probably don't know this, but this is what happened with me. You probably don't remember this, but this is what happened with me with your church, 1986. And I said, I just want to show you how I'm paying it forward. And I kind of gave him a layout of what the Wellington Food Bank does and how our food bank is paying it forward to our community and, I, and thank them for reaching out, even though I didn't want them to reach out, but thank you for doing that. And they, they got a hold of me right away and said, you know, we were so grateful to get your letter because as a board, they were going to shut down their food bank, but their letter showed them not to. Mm -hmm.